Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Genshi Impact. In the legend of the Cersei of the Canop, the memory of the Great Father has stripped down through the countless age of nothing past. Its story, it takes the ancient name and passed down through generation of heroes, now upon rest upon the shores of a young samurai hunter. As tribe conflicts grows even more intense, they may be those to ask how well does he understand its meaning and how does he view this coming crisis. By past view and present flame, it lights marches ever on. Today we're doing Hotsland, Silicons of the Canopla story quest. First things first, Kanish play style. Show us you idle animation, boy. <laughs> there we go. He's like he's teasing him, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's like it's like his bunch of Pymos companion, but this is Pistolated Minecraft. He is like a Minecraft chai because of this Pistolated and people call him the Ben 10 because of the wrist. Alright dude, um his abilities when you swing around, how do you use it? Whee! That's fine. Let's charge y'all, dude. For the Lord of the Night! Like, oh, it does that! He's like he definitely became Ben 10 just to be his ass. Ooh, swing again. Oh, that's fun! Did I miss the, did I miss the other one? Oh, uh, 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 anyways, that was fun. Wait, hold up. I swing. Why are you just tail to hold on? That's hilarious. Hey, look at this. Oh, that looks fun. And I'm using the dragon as my weapon. Okay. Oh god, chill out! I didn't see the dragon form. Oh, that looks pixelated. Amazing. Oh, E, what the hell? I didn't do that earlier. Oh god, he just has a blast away. Would I pull for him? I would have, but I want a woman on my team. I'm actually kids will get started. Can I approach as a monster dude so you can see I look like one? If it lets me. Never mind, it does not. Anyways, we arrived. Hi, I'm Looney. Are you here to help find the baby Saurian? Toba, you must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Help us. Uh, uh, it's nice to meet you too, but we're just passing through. Oh, but Uncle Sonka said he was going to send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? I'm afraid we don't know anyone called Senka. Yeah, sorry. Whatever this is about, it sounds like you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? Darn it. We've been tricked, Tony. I should have known that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are we supposed to do about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It's okay, Huni. Don't worry. Well, why don't you tell us what happened with these baby Saurians, huh? There's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad Saurian got injured. Her name's Nana, and she has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. I'm really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. If Nana is your dad, Saurian, why isn't he the one looking for them? My dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for Turnfire Night. It's a really important ceremony, more important than this, anyway. I'm not supposed to be out here either, but I snuck out without telling him. I didn't think it would take very long, but then that guy we ran into made us tell him loads of stories, and it wasted so much time. Yeah, he was so selfish. He doesn't have a heart. It's all right. Don't let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you because we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? We sure do. So, are the baby Sawas nearby? They should be. I already managed to find their tracks and it seems like they're hiding on the cliff. Leave it to power me. It shouldn't take long. Really? Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. Ether. Awesome. You gotta be careful out on the cliffs, though. They're really steep. Even grown-ups have trouble climbing them. <laughs> That's funny. It was this visit from Hootsland. Did I say it? Who I don't care. The baby Saurians are on the okay. cliff, so okay, let's I'm find a way out. I'm still, this thing right here, so the high up penalty. So now we're gonna go for I am the mysterious. Oh, oh, it's right here. Oh, these things. Oh, hey, look. I'm. Hey, hello. I'm your parent. Hello, I'm the daddy. The Mountain King. <laughs> I mean, that works. All right. Um, the next one. Okay. Who else can we? And it's still more help. Um. Okay. There is. Okay. Another one. Hey. 
Oh, the way those cute little hats. That's me really cute. Too high. I'm fucking scared. I understand the language when you're animal. If I'm not the animal, then they'd say something else like, what the fuck are you? I don't know. Then you click this. It's just more. Uh, I don't know that. That's what it looks like. I am just an animal. I could do that. It's like playing with the waves. What the? Is that? Is that Aja? What's it doing here? Aja, where's your master? Oh, we found them. Wait, but what's that other? A how? Oh, it is a how. I think they even the whole time. Well, if it isn't the gruesome twosome who wormed their way into our servant circle of friends, <laughs> still awestruck from the last time we met. Would that be why you hastily scrambled up here to pay your respects the moment you saw us? <laughs> I suppose we can't blame you. Such is the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. Very well. You heathens leave us no choice. <laughs> the almighty dragon lord, Kahulahau, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Come, pucker up. You may now kiss our feet. Wait, are you like Kanichi's sidekick? What the heck are you going on about? You're somehow managing to be even more annoying than the last time we met. Silence! Who are you calling sidekick? <laughs> we are <laughs> the Supreme, sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame. We shall have you know that last time, were it not for Kanichi's earnest pleading on your behalf, you would have received not a single word of mercy. Oh, come on. You talk big, but Kanich clearly has you under lock and key. Oh, Goisava, what brings you to this mountaintop? <laughs> That's more like it. I understand. Pyron likes to be a bitch. If you must know, our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hoitzenlan, and we chose to grant his request. Abyss incident? See this little lizard? Its mother, a medium-sized lizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then assailed her own offspring. Mm -hmm. Yikes! So how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the abyss. Naturally, she has departed for the Night Kingdom. <laughs> Such a fragile creature. Apparently, she ended her struggle by leaping from a cliff. What? Leaping from a cliff? My dear anemic flying ant, as addled with questions as your head may be, please keep them to yourself and wipe that absurd expression off your face. We are the almighty dragon lord, Kahulahau! Not a wish-granting fountain. Anemic flying ant! You! Just you wait. Two can play at the ugly nickname game. Oh, ho, ho, you found a competition, Paimon. Hmm. We sense a faint abyssal energy. <laughs> An evil sorcerer must be lurking nearby, but they are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen? You're just lucky that our servant has such vile taste in friends. Otherwise, we would beat you black and blue, and then purple, then black again. <laughs> if you're not here to kiss my feet, and get out of my sight. Do not impede the work of the Almighty Dragon Lord, Kahulahau. I don't think it's job. on that guy. I'm a serious. Still, good to know about the Abyss Threat, huh? Wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's not get sidetracked. Nah. Okay. Back down from our wings. Hey, you two. We are back. Fast. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm so glad that the babies are all right. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome. Pizza cake. You're not from that land, right? Because your clothes look different than ours. Oh. Hey, you must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest at my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big scions at the canopy welcome. We love having guests, and you're really nice people. 
not like Glasses Guy. By the sound of it, Glasses Guy wasn't from Natlan either, right? Uh-huh. Well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there was something really fishy about him. Really? Maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Ahal mentioned. Could you tell us a little bit more about him? Sure, if you're interested. Oh, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Go on. Oh, please, mister. That's in a Zuma so outfit. Many stories already. What are you going to help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story. One more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. Oh, you mean turn fire. That's where the ancient name Mollipo comes from. Oh, wow. So it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh-huh. There's a story behind every ancient name. The legend goes that the Turnfire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tyrant Oj Khan to rule over Natlan and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turnfire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, you'll feel a horrible burning pain from behind you, but you won't die from it right away. And whatever you do, you mustn't turn back to look at it. Why? What happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around, poof! You get burned to a crisp. Well, like good fried golly chicken. Gee. I mean, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people alive? That is a big no no in my book. Right? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Oats Khan really was an evil tyrant. Yes, shocking behavior. Now, let me guess. Eventually, a valiant hero came to save the day? That's usually how these stories go. Good guess, Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero was called Yuponki. He's the ancestor of our tribe. Mm-hmm. Yuponki was friends with Ochkon the Tyrant, and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Archon. He was working as an ordinance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. We could have a boy Archon, but they chose waifus. He didn't That's like okay. Ochkon was such a cruel tyrant. So, he stole the Turnfire and threw it at the Ochkon's army. The soldiers couldn't defend against it, and they all got turned to ash. And that's how our ancestors set our people free. But, just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Ochkon calling out to him from behind. It caught him off guard. And he turned around to look. But Ochkon wasn't there. All he saw was a city burn black, an army in ruins, and giant flames reaching up into the sky. A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was burned to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turn fire? Or the price of turning back. Nobody knows the answer. But the fire that consumed you, Punky, burned more fiercely than any other. It burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. And then, the flame dropped into the deathly dark night kingdom, where it still burns to this day. The grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life. But for the dead um, to be reborn, is that they have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. It's like a final look back at your life, where you have to answer for everything you did. Anyway, that's the story of Yuponki's turn fire. Ah, a fine parable indeed. So, is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? I don't know. I think it's just a story. Either way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since? Sure has. It went to Burkina, the hero that we celebrate on Turnfire Night. But that was 500 years ago. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kinich. So we often call him Malipo Kinich. Kinich, huh? Oh, All this right, guy. Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. 
Now, can you please go find the baby Saurians for us like you promised? Uh, I would. But doesn't the legend of the turn fire teach us not to look back? Let's not go dredging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear. Starting now. I swear no? to fucking God. Careful, Toba. You look dangerously close to cursing me out right now. Tut, tut. We can't have that. Cursing is for grown-ups only. Now you can't say the word fuck or anything else. Uncle, you'd better not be trying to trick us. Or the turnfire will get you when you die. How would it get me if I'm outside of Natlan? Uncle Glasses isn't from here, you know. Unlike you. You come on, Glasses. Huh? Wait. Is that... Oh, that's oh, what we came in. Kiddos, I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on their way here, and, uh, yeah, they'll help you out on my behalf. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? We met at the foot of this cliff, so beneath the peaks, let's go with Sanka. Seriously? That sounds fake as fuck. If you don't believe me, turn around and see for yourselves. They're right behind you. Huh? Where? Oh, wait! Uncle Sanka, where did you go? And that's where he came in. Yeah, oh. definitely a fishy oh. character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us too. He'll pay for this. All he got out of us was some stories though. What's the worst that could happen? Hmm. Traveler, maybe we should go tell Kenich about this. A house says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a loose cannon. We probably shouldn't take him at his word. Huh? You know Kenich? Um, not very well, but we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Oh man, I'm so jealous. I never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's the Saurian Hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because of that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Oh, the creep who calls himself Kahul Ahau? Yeah, we've had the... pleasure of meeting him, too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. Exactly! I don't know why Kenich partnered up with him. Why didn't he pick me instead? Oh, <gasps> you'd have special. Oh, as in oh, vision holders. Hey, look how late it is. We've been out way too long. We better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Oh, yikes. You're right. Okay, well, this path here leads to our settlement. If you decide to visit, remember to come to my house. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon. We gotta run. Bye for now. Okay, it's not done. That's how it is, like the last one. So, next quest. Is this where he lives? Did it make sense why he lives here? Does Celsius live here too? Hello. Huni, what were you thinking going out by yourself? Don't you know how dangerous it is? It's okay. Toba helped me. And we met some kind strangers who helped us. And... Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were so kind, huh? Oh, I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads? Uh, yeah, actually, they did. In big, bold letters. Don't talk back to me. The Mountain King problem still hasn't been solved. What would I do if I lost you too? No dinner for you tonight. They were good people, Dad. Dinner or no dinner. Hello again, Hoonie. Uh, it's Miss Paimon and Mr. Traveler. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me. And I promised we'd take care of them if they came to visit. Oh, so you're the kind strangers. Well, I'm Trinidad. Apparently, you helped my daughter today, so if there's anything you need, just ask. As an elder of the Scions of the Canopy, I've got some influence around here. Now, I trust that you're sensible people who know better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. 
We just helped, happened to be passing by, so we lent her a hand. It was nothing. Yep, just helping a neighbor. We're not looking for anything in return. Oh? Well, let's hope so. Dad, please! They're not bad people. They've eaten at the same table with Kanich before. Be nice to them. Kanich? Wait! I heard that two mysterious travelers from afar showed up at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Are they... you? Yes, I'm one of them. And Paimon's the other! Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I do apologize. A lot's been going on in our tribe lately, and I suppose the pressure must be getting to me. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I was so rude to you. I, I, uh, I feel ashamed. Uh, we got off on the wrong foot. Can we, uh, start over? Okay! Oh, we're talking! Seriously, though, don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see Hooney got home safe and sound. Oh, you just arrived, I take it. And, and it would be my honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Careful now. That's quite an about face. We've heard that kind of thing can lead to spontaneous combustion around these parts. <coughs> uh. Say the VIP treatment. If you need a favor, let's talk. <laughs> my dear traveler, you are very perceptive indeed. Go inside now, Hooney. Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay. Look after Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. They're very special guests. Well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises that we'll be able to help. <clears throat> well, this is a matter of utmost importance. Please, uh, allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the Turnfire Night. It is a traditional ceremony among the scions of the canopy in which we remember our ancestor, Burkina, and his companion, Kangamato, the Mountain King. Burkina was a hero who bore oh, the ancient name Malipo, and Kangamato was a powerful Yumkasur warrior. Together, they fought against the Abyss. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Burkina paid with his life. The Mountain King survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. Normally, Yumkasaurs never live longer than a century. It is possible that the Abyssal Power is responsible for his unnaturally long lifespan. Wait, so he lived? I mean, he's still alive? Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The Abyssal Power inside him is highly sensitive. And when it is disturbed, he awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. So, besides the ceremony, another important part of Turnfire Night each year is cleansing the Abyssal Power inside the Mountain King so that he will remain sound asleep. However, Abyss-related incidents have been on the rise in that land lately, as I'm sure you're both aware. As a result, it has become increasingly difficult to keep the Mountain King in hibernation. Only five months have passed since the last Turnfire Night, and he's already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has. We managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away, but it was a close we'll call. We'll we'll he we'll could reawaken we'll at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion, Nana, during the ceremony. She became contaminated by the Abyss as a result, and... We heard. Such a tragedy. We're really sorry for your loss. Ah, <sighs> yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional Turnfire Night ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer. From what I've heard about your adventures, I believe you would be perfect for the role. Did you really have a flame bearer in the tribe? Of course. Plus, he's a bona fide hero who inherited the Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kanich? Yes, he's the one. A hero worth his weight in gold. And unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prizes for guessing what he said when I asked him to host a Turnfire Night outside of the annual schedule. An exceptional ceremony? Oh, I'll have to charge an exceptional prize. I swear, no other concept exists in that boy's brain. At least he's 
unpredictable. Fuck over to more and he's all yours. I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs, but I'm convinced the Wyub got hit on the head and took a wrong turn the day it chose to give that ancient name to him. I mean, have you ever heard of a hero whose mantra is, what's your asking price? Oh, and don't get me started on that insufferable a how he hangs around with. <sighs> Thinks he's God's gift to mankind. Pompous fool. Yeah, Paimon has to agree on that last part. <sighs> anyway, the fact is, the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as we can find someone else. And besides, you two seem like much better candidates. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Just say what I need to do next. Wonderful! I can't thank you enough. Hooney was right about you. You have kindness in your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain. I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. As experienced warriors, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. Yes, yeah, sure. Now, Act 2 has begun. A hero's riot. Okay, meanwhile in a hidden cave. Ha! Ha! Achoo! Curses! Who dares insult the great Kahul Ahau behind his back? Oh, great Kahul Ahau! Bless you! Was that the guy in the glasses or someone different? Shut your filthy mouth, worm of the abyss! Your putrid words defile the air we breathe! You make the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How, sick to the stomach! Speaking as a member of the Abyss Order, that's music to my ears. Exactly oh, the kind him. of reaction we're going for. Why is different from the cousin? But on a personal level, I this gotta is say, is not. it's pretty hurtful. Ugh. Never have we heard such brazen blustering from someone who is inches from death! Up yours, four eyes! We spit in your face! Pfft! <laughs> Spitting sound. Okay, well, that I am at a loss to explain. How do I manage to stay so chirpy and cheerful? I can only guess it's some kind of powerful magic, but I digress. Mr. Kinich, I admit it, you, sir, are a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. You see, I'm very interested in the lore of your tribe. Kay? Is that it? Kay? Aren't you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the Abyss? Like, do I give it's the a extreme fuck? sports! The other day, I narrowly avoided getting hit by a very brave soul who just leaped off a cliff. I think you call it bungee jumping? Anyway, I was very impressed. That is what I call embracing the spirit of adventure. Look, I even did a painting inspired by the bravery and freedom of the scions of the canopy. You scum-sucking swine! Ugh, I swear, if you go bungee jumping, it'll be without a rope! Head first off the tallest cliff with a band of hunters on your tail and nowhere left to run and a bottomless cesspit waiting for you on the ground. You say that, but I get the sense that Mr. Kinich isn't planning to take my life right now. On top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar. So why don't we just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. What do you say, Mr. Kinich? He says no. <laughs> or you could tell me what it is you're really after. What? And then I'll name my price. Ah, uh, nice to play smart. Um, isn't this place dangerous as full of monsters, the killer babies? <laughs> I hate it. killing them for grinding for weapons. Need it's kind of torture, you know. But that's okay. Uh, they spawn back in. The abyss contamination is back. It's just right there. No surprises there. No doubt that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. See those torches over there. Those are the Sacred Flame offshoots that we requested from the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. They contain the power of the Pyro Archon. Are you saying that the Sacred Flame and the Turnfire are the same thing? Well, for ceremonial purposes, at least. Sending someone to the Night Kingdom to retrieve the legendary Turnfire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the Sacred Flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why we use it in the ceremony. Gotcha! So 
basically, we just need to clean up the filth with the sacred flame. Well, that's one part of it, yes. But the complete ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. First, the flame bearer must collect a kindling of the sacred flame from the starting point, then use a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the sacred flame pillars. Then, they must go down into the canyon, all the way into the cave where the mountain king slumbers, lighting braziers and the final altar along the way. The most skilled flame bearers can accomplish all of this without touching the ground once. As much as I hate to admit it, Kanich is capable of this. Wow! He can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground? So can you, Paimon. Well, of course Paimon can. It'd be much harder for you guys. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not a requirement of the ceremony. You're allowed to touch the ground. And the only thing you're not allowed to do is turn back. The flame bearer must always keep moving forward. You can't skip a pillar and come back to it after lighting the next one. To do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So, what actually happens if you do turn back? Surely the fires don't just go out. Um, well, um, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today, then? Does the same rule apply? Oh, no. Don't worry. Today is just a practice. The order doesn't matter. You just need to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, then go light all the braziers. Are you ready? Let's begin. I'll repeat all the key points again. Gather the kindling, mm -hmm. cleanse the filth, yeah. and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end. Got it. Am I being eaten for this? Smaller flames blew with the sound of the sucker flames, intense for the tongue fly and night ritual could touch by the sing of the campy. They contain a blessed power and that develops the darkness, interact with little blizzard to obtain the sky flames protection. The cleansing and thaw flogging to cause explosive of sacrifice the Olympus power. While under the protection of the sacred flames, she can approach at a tail blissy and ignite it. Okay, got it. Uh, let's make a change this one thing. I got this, I got this, I'm gonna turn to this little kitty. Can touch this. Alright, let's use this kindling to complete our mission. Uh, wait, wait. Oh. There's abyssal filth over there. Let's burn it away with the sacred flame. Let's try to see. And again. Okay, that's one. Ignite it. Okay, that makes sense. Let's do this. So the next one, I'm gonna grab this and ignite the next one. I see it. Good aim. Let's spit! Blah! Okay. Uh, approach the visit. Oh, I was supposed to approach it! Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna back up and back up. Maybe. Do I have it? So I'm supposed to approach it. And then. And then do. Oh, that's how it works. Okay, that makes sense now. A little confusing from the start. So I'm supposed to keep going forward. This is only a practice one. According to what's going on, I need to grab this. And this needs to go. Okay, that's number three. And there's enemies nearby? Are you serious? Why nearby? That's kind of strange. You see that, guys? It's still in the middle. Okay, that's only. We get another one. Back up. Back up. Ah, I should go one faster if I get a jog. You're way over there. Get the eggs in the bay. Is that even safe? Drive and kill! I think I'm gonna fight him off. As an animal that's going to burn you. Burn you alive. No, let me get out. Let me get out. Let me get out. Ah! Cochina! Hiya! Make them wet. Ooh, that's a good amount of damage for me. Rastily! Double it! I missed. You gotta be a deadly friend. Lenny, you go on. I'm gonna press Q and I E. And boom. Burn. Ouch. Oh. Okay. Anyways. Oh. Oh, get out. Okay. Anyways. No, you gotta approach just one. Hold on, let me just grab it all in my fine, actually. 
Gotta keep walking forward. That's number five. What's number? Oh, it's right there. Dude, what is that happening over there right now? Is that part of the quest? That should be all the braziers. Let's regroup with Trinidad. I'm a monster. Ah! Just kidding. Anyways, hey, what up, boy? I knew I was right about you. You have outperformed all of the other previous candidates. If there was an ancient name for outstanding flame bearers, <laughs> I'm sure the Wyab would consider you for the honor. Paimon could probably get the job done too. Yeah, although it would probably take Paimon quite a bit longer. <laughs> all right, now there's still that, a few days I left see until some the ceremony. Says it. And it is I this. should probably get back so I can inform the chief and the other elders that I have found the flame bearer we need. You mean they've still got to sign off on it? Some of them are still hoping we can come to an agreement with Kanich, but that's only because they haven't seen you in action. Still, hmm, I'm the one responsible for securing a flame bearer, and my recommendation is you. Um, just for Paimon's own peace of mind, are you sure it's not going to be a problem having Outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? See that place over there? There was a time long before the age of Burkina and the Mountain King, when we, Scions of the Canopy, called that our home. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now, it has become a place where our youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. If we fail to keep the threat posed by the Mountain King at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. So, to answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. Fair enough. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll need you to drop by my place at some point before the ceremony, if that's all right. There are still a few final details that we need to discuss. Okay, see you later then. You have my gratitude. We've helped out with a lot of other local festivals before, but this one feels a little I each. different. Anyway, let's take a break before heading back to Trinidad's place. Was he stalking us from a distance? And I swear, I, I joggle, I hog was like, Hey! Pop over here! Act 2 is complete and he's walking away. Dude, I have said we took your wall instead of what you're supposed to do. That's okay. We're gonna get the job done. Is it just me or is this a little shorter compared to Milani's spring watch out the spring story quest? Oh, I can each. Hey, buddy. So I was talking to you. Traveler? Paimon? Kanich! Fancy meeting you here. We've actually been looking for you. Hey there, nice to see you again. I'll get straight to the point. I hear you accepted a proposal from Elder Trinidad. Oh! You were still his first choice, it's just... Oh, jeez, um... It's not what it looks like, promise! Chill, it's cool. I only mention it because there's something you should know. And I suspect Elder Trinidad hasn't been completely forthcoming with you. His true intention is to resolve the Mountain King problem once and for all. Once and for all? You mean this'll be the last Turnfire Night ever? That's right. He wants to use you to send the Mountain King to the Night Kingdom. To the Night Kingdom? You mean... To his death. Whoa, 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 are you serious right now? You shouldn't go blurting out accusations like that. I could get you in trouble. Too blunt? Okay. I'll phrase it more gently. There is potentially a possibility that Elder Trinidad may be hoping that during the course of the ceremony, you kill the Mountain King dead. That's ridiculous! He told us the Mountain King is a living symbol of your tribe's glory! And that glory comes at a price. Okay. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. Oh, he uh, said that too. Yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Oh yeah, he said that. Is it because of his companion, Nana? Mm -hmm. She likely won't be the last to lose her life either. How does he plan to kill him? The Mountain King is a unique case when it comes to abyssal contamination. It's eaten away at him for so long that it has consumed him entirely. 
and the damage is irreversible. That evil power has both driven him insane and kept him alive over the centuries. So to look at it one way, once it's completely purged from his body, the Mountain King will finally be able to rest in peace. In past ceremonies, we've only purged around half of the Abyssal power. This was to strike a balance, to keep him alive, but also keep him asleep. Trinidad didn't say anything about how much power he wanted us to purge, but he did say there were some more details to go over before the ceremony. Then it sounds like you'll know for sure soon enough. If he really asks us to kill the Mountain King, what should we do? Um, is it silly? Wait, no. I think it'll... I think it'll be a little out of a death here. I know this must come as quite a shock, so I suggest you act like you didn't hear anything for now. But would you have time to visit the Chief after your meeting with Elder Trinidad? I'd like to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? One that comes at a very reasonable price. I'm sure you have plenty of other questions, but we can talk more later. Okay, we'll be there. Good. See you soon. Yeah, buddy. Actually, can this deal? Alright, Minecraft tribe! Hey, Trinidad, we are here to serve you. Ah, mighty Outlanders, you have returned. Did you have a good rest? It was. Uh, uh, pretty good, yeah! Don't sound so well, suspicious. Glad to hear it. Things are progressing very smoothly on my end. Many of the elders have heard of your heroic deeds, including the chief. They all speak very favorably of you. There are still those who insist that the ceremony should be performed by the bearer of the Malipo name. <laughs> but they're just stuck in the past. We need to move with the times. Plus, Kamish doesn't want to do it anyway. Exactly. Mm. So, now, it's time for us to discuss the finer details of the ceremony. We covered the fire lighting part of the proceedings yesterday. The next part is the purification of the Mountain King. How does that work? It's quite simple. You just need to use the sacred flame. We've done it plenty of times before, and it's always very routine. I'm sure you won't have any problems. One point I'd like to stress, though, is that you need to burn away as much of the abyssal energy as you possibly can. The more we dispel, the longer the Mountain King will remain asleep. Asleep, huh? Precisely. In previous years, the Flame Bearer has often been unable to dispel a sufficient amount of abyssal energy. That's the only reason why we have to perform the ceremony on a regular basis. But I understand that you have a lot of experience fighting against the Abyss, and you seemed to wield the Sacred Flame quite effortlessly yesterday. With your help, I'm optimistic this time we can dispel all the remaining Abyssal energy from the Mountain King's body, freeing us from this ever-looming threat for many years to come. Traveler? Yes? Got it. anything else we need to know? So this doesn't phase you at all, huh? You clearly have a lot of confidence in yourself. <laughs> That's all you really need to know? The ceremony's in three days. I'll come and fetch you when we're ready. Three meantime, days? Feel free to take a look around our settlement. It would mean a lot to the elders if you got to know some of our people. And if you wouldn't mind helping them out with a few errands here and there, that would be even better. So now we have extra errands to run? Maybe we should add a little extra to the price. <laughs> Just a humble suggestion, that's all. It will help you gain the respect of our people, and as a mighty hero, I truly believe that's what you deserve. I'll be sticking around for the next few days, so if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Oh boy. Seems like Kamich was right. We should go meet up with him right away. Your support is important. He's right here, talk to someone already. I wasn't totally stalking anyone or anything, right? Anyways, hey, Kanich. Huh, you're here. Hey, hey, I know that guy. Kanich, Elder Trinidad said that. I can tell. It's written on your faces. Is that the Traveler and Paimon? Uh, forgive me for not being there to welcome you on your arrival. That should have been my duty as Chief. Hello, Chief Waina. I only heard the news from Trinidad yesterday, so I asked Kanich to invite you over for a quick chat. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I believe Kinich has already filled you in, so I'll get straight to the point. Firstly, I fully endorse your appointment as flame bearers for the upcoming turn fire night. However, I would like to request that you take steps to ensure the Mountain King's safety. Every child of our tribe grows up hearing the tales of our heroes. From Yuponki, the Firebringer, to Burkina and the Mountain King who fought against the Abyss. This is our history and our heritage, the source of our pride and the center of our faith. To kill the Mountain King would be to destroy our spirit. 
I would never be able to face our ancestors in the Night Kingdom. Nana's death was a great tragedy, and I do not blame Trinidad for the actions he has taken. Nevertheless, I cannot allow any harm to come to the Mountain King. The very roots of our identity are at stake. <sighs> My honored guests, please give this matter your serious consideration. Is the notion that I was satisfied of both sides? Uh, perhaps there is. But despite all our attempts to contain the situation over the years, we have not found it. Right now, I should like to hear where you stand on this matter. I need some time to build this all, but... I understand. There are still three days left before the ceremony. I hope they will bring you clarity. So, Kanich, earlier you were saying that... Let's walk and talk. I'll show you around the tribe. That works, too. Paimon needs to get some air after this. Well, holy outside. What are you talking about me, Paimon? Okay, anyways, we want to walk with Kanich. <laughs> okay. Oh, walk with Kanich if I was in the main play. Let's ship her with him instead. What about him, her and child? I thought they'd love that. I mean, I would still do, but still. Kanich, Paimon finally understands why you turned Trinidad down. You knew what he was planning, didn't you? That's why you didn't want to be the flame bearer this time, because it's a double-edged sword. The whole Mora thing was just a sneaky excuse. Double-edged sword is right. But my response wasn't merely an excuse. To solve this exceptional problem, an exceptional price must be paid. I say you have a plan? I'm working on it. Really? Well, come on then, let's hear it! In a moment. Didn't you have a question you were about to ask me? Oh, yeah. What was it again? Oh, right! We need to talk about a how. He's completely unhinged! That's the point. Where is he today? I agree that he has a problem. He needs disciplining, so I hired him a teacher. You got him a teacher? Oh, Paimon would love to see him get scolded for bad behavior. Well, you little piece of shit. Anyway, moving on. When we ran into a how, he said you two were investigating some abyss thing together. Is that related to the whole Mountain King situation? Yes, that's the angle I've been working on. I'm a Saurian hunter, but I occasionally hunt the abyss too. One time I was pursuing some purple demonic dogs when I accidentally entered a hidden space. Oh. I did some research after the fact. Apparently they're known as beastly rifts, and there are many of them of all different sizes. That's where those purple dogs were coming from. So... So, if we can locate one of these beastly rifts, clear the monsters out, and move the Mountain King inside, he'd be able to continue living, but without posing a threat to the tribe. Whoa, that sounds kind of crazy. Would it really work? It's not without its risks, of course. There's a lot of unknowns in the equation. For instance, for all we know, a prolonged period inside the rift could make the Mountain King's condition worse. Still, we desperately need something like this, even just as a temporary measure. You've seen the conflict the issue is causing in our tribe for yourselves. And believe me, it's been a long time coming. The Chief is adamant about keeping the Mountain King alive. Whatever happens. I can understand. It's less about the Mountain King and more about preserving your culture and heritage. Yes, but on the flip side, you've got people like Elder Trinidad, who is more concerned about protecting the people he cares about now and into the future. And he has every right to take that view. It's one thing to try and preserve the last remnants of a glorious past, but making your kin pay the price for it? No one can seriously tell them that's a fair trade. You're right. There's no easy answers here. Let's leave that to one side for a moment and assume we go with your plan. How do you actually intend to find one of these beastly rifts? Because at least in our experience, the dogs open the rifts when they want to attack us, not the other way around. I think I know a way. Are you really going to do this? You have any better ideas? Not at the moment, but it just feels like using the power of the Abyss for our own ends isn't going to end well. After all, the Abyss is what turned the Mountain King into a monster in the first place. People are gonna think you've lost your marbles! If it doesn't end well, then that's the price we pay. Everything in the world comes at a price. Even when Yuponki, the Firebringer, stole the Turnfire, it cost him dearly. The Mountain King's erratic outbursts have brought tensions within the tribe to a boiling point. Unless this gets resolved quickly, everyone will be stuck in a stalemate. Alright, so what's this 
nice deal you wanted to make with us. We're hardly experts on exploiting abyssal power. All I need you to do is keep people away from me. I'm getting harassed on a daily basis by people trying to convince me to be the flame bearer. I can't afford to waste all my energy dealing with them. If you help me out, there will be a gift for you in return. Ooh. Ooh, what kind of gift? Something well worth your while, I'd say. Okay, but how do you keep our people away? Just keep doing what you've been doing. Integrate yourself with the tribes people, so everyone comes to terms with the fact that we have a new flame bearer. That way, I won't have an endless stream of people coming to beg me to join the ceremony, and I can focus on finding a way to summon the beastly rift. Then, when the day of the ceremony comes, We'll move the Mountain King into his new home. That sounds pretty crazy. Even for a daredevil like you, that's dangerous. And even if it works, what if neither Chief Wyna nor Elder Trinidad are happy with it? Have you thought about what you'd do then? At least the two of them would finally be on the same side of the issue, leaving only me on the opposing side. The tribe needs leaders like them far more than a Saurian hunter for hire like me. Either way, it sounds like there's no more than this for you. <laughs> Can I take that to mean that we have a deal? We can give it a try. For sure. And who knows? Maybe we'll come up with an even better solution to all of this in the next couple of days. Great. Well, for the next couple of days, please spend some time among the tribe and lend a hand wherever you can. I'm sure everyone will be swept off their feet when they meet our new flame bearer. Good luck to us both. Okay, we shook hands, and we get a hug, and then we just do that. Okay, task for the day. Meet the tribe's people and take some heat off of Kenichi's back. Yes, with Melania Kachina as a drag along. Look, I can't believe I'm doing this with Kachina. Do I have to be you? Hey, those two guys. Can we start the mouthless? How can you call the Mountain King a monster? Because he hurt a lot of people. And look what happened to Nana. You know, respecting people's um, opinions. Koba, Honey, what's wrong? Honey's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. It's not right. He's our hero. Huh. Once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. Hey, okay, let's not thought. Aren't you best friends? <sighs> Yesterday, maybe, but not anymore. Toba? Oh, fine. I guess my dad is right. Things change, and you just have to accept it and move forward. Today, our friendship is over. There's no going back. Oh, come on. Cut it out, you two. We have some great news to tell you. The Traveler is going to be the flame bearer for the next Turnfire Night. He's going to do a beautiful ceremony and cure the Mountain King's illness for good. What? Really? Of course. I'm an expert of the shit. Totally. So that's what my dad wanted to talk to you about? To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kanich. Wait, speaking of Kanich, where even is that guy? Oh, yeah, good question. Is he not coming to the ceremony anymore? We can get him to come, but if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. He'll be sure to give you both a piece of his mind. No, we can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't afford to make such a bad first impression. I didn't mean to argue with Toba. All he said was that the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was the one who turned it into a fight. You two clearly care about each other. The Battle Kings can't change that. Yeah! If you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would have come to look for the baby Saurians with you. Uh, all right. Well, because it's the Traveler and Paimon and Kanich, I'm sorry, Toba. I'm sorry for all the mean things I said about the Mountain King. Dad just really misses Nana. And I was really upset that she's gone, too. Huh? Oh. Uh. I 
shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did either. It wasn't very nice of me. For the Traveler and Paimon, Kanich, and for Nana. I'm sorry too, Huni. Now hug it out. That's more like it. Now you're best friends again. Guess so. Toba, if I ever say something mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I say it to someone else, and not you. I'd better go buy some colored cloth for my dad now. He needs it for turn fire night. Let's play again some other time. See you, Toba. See you, Traveler and Pylon. Okay. I'll head home as well, then. See you next time. Okay, take care, you two. <sighs> Even though they said they're sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Time really are changing. Once and for all. Come on, let's move on. Next. Okay, what's the Okay, now into the next person? Huh? What's going on over there? Let's take a look. All the place the gods. Ooh, that gave me an idea. No, never mind. It's about something funny. Hey there! What's happening here? A rehearsal for the Turnfire Night dance. Um, you don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? It's rare to see a new face around the tribe these days. I thought everyone would be keeping away. Uh, why do you say that? Because of the Turnfire Night, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. This isn't one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know? The flame bearer this time is actually gonna be an outsider? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. I would have loved to meet them in person. Yeah, now you have. Uh, what? Oh, it's you? Man, oh man. <laughs> well, this is a nice surprise. It's funny. I was just thinking that I'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Uh, then suddenly, there you are. <laughs> Must be my lucky day. Um, you're not taking part in the Turnfire Night? How come? You're not an outsider too, are you? No, it's not a tribe. <laughs> you must be joking. Watch this. Um, you just... You're just dancing? Paramount likes it. Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better looking guys who dances beneath the pillars of the Sacred Flame. Been doing it a few years. Always gets the ladies out to watch. <laughs> hey, yo, you're a sip too? Oh, very impressive. So why'd you quit? Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our elders' Saurian companions even lost her life not long ago. The question is, what are we going to do about this in the long term? But our leaders don't have any answers for us. They're probably too busy fighting about it amongst themselves. The way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah. It's a great opportunity to go see the world. As every male scion of the canopy knows, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forwards. We take pride in that. I won't forget my roots. Here we go. What are your plans for the next step? <laughs> I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test. Find a decent quality relic, and they'll make me a member. What's the Saurian Relics Association? You've never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants from that age. Speaking of which, the guy who was Flamebearer before you. I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that time. A how? A how's a relic from an ancient Saurian civilization? Oh, yeah, him. So you know those two already, huh? Then do you know how, how they met? Is? It was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folks say that the kind of contract usually comes with a huge hidden cost. There's blood? Really? It's like, ah, oh, uh, take it. Who knows? But if it's true, Kanich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back. 
And it looked to me like it was depicting a Saurian and a human involved in some kind of Saurian era contract ritual. Oh, does that count as a relic then? You bet it does. I was all ready to go take a picture of it and use that as my entry ticket to the association. But after all the abyssal activity recently, I heard that area's been overrun by monsters. The best laid plans, huh? I'll just have to wait and see if things improve. Or... You look like you know your way around a fight. I don't suppose there's any chance you'd be able to help? If all you need to get is a picture, that should be pretty achievable, right? The Traveler deals with monsters all the time. It's a piece of cake! Wait, you're seriously gonna help me out? Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the things we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Pyro Archon above, you two have hearts of gold, you know that? You're the kind of people who could dive into the turn fire deep in the bowels of the Night Kingdom, and it wouldn't burn a single hair off your head. I'll take that as a compliment. Of course it is. All right, come with me. I'll show you the way. He's like, do you know the way? The like, Ebola this way. Okay, we're here. Oh, God. And there it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. All righty, then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm not about to cramp your style. Just hide. Meanwhile, Lolly, Kachina, Lenny, and Beto. Let's fight them off. Let's go! Ouch! Don't even shoot at hurts. No! It doesn't matter. Woohoo! Bounce, swim, okay. swim, Katrina, and do with that shit. Give me a distraction. Taking down your babies. Like my children. Yeah, fucking child. Like not my child. But your monsters, okay? You're not. Nah, you're not being nah. You're just attacking us because we're killing them. Okay, let's try to again. Do you think we got one of them though? Watch that one, Lenny. Okay, I kill your kids. Now what you gonna do, huh? Striking them down. Striking them. And then keep going. And then keep going. Hey, you wanna hit me? Go ahead and hit Beto. You missed! Mind! But wait. Hey! Electric and what the fuck to go? There you are. Keep swinging at them. Electrifying and flames. Watch your burn to equips. Like how ready? The dog guard really. Now disappear. What's this? What the hell are you? Did I see you? Oh, ouch! Out of block. Kind of. Okay. Let's okay. touch up a blast again. What in that face? Examine them. What? I saw the eye. That should be the last of them. It's a good thing Tiago had the sense to stay in his hiding place, or things could have gotten really hairy for him. Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a mural. It's a little on the small side. It, most ancient murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like someone with a paintbrush got bored and started doodling. It does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian and a human. So, is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looks like? Eh, whatever. We're not here to decipher it. Just photograph it. Yeah, good idea. Now I gotta take a picture of this. Take a photo. Lonely, you got this. Hucha! Oh, we're just done. That's a wrap. Let's take it back to Tiago. You want that fight? Boy, what you doing over there? And how do these guys not see you while you're hiding away? And someone is talking with him. What is going on? You've been robbed? Oh, Ponche. And I thought my luck was bad. Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap-toothed goon stole it from me. Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let 
let me take a look. Uh, yep, that's the one. Pyro Archon above, you two are superhumans. Hey, Ponche, come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Traveler and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? I don't think so. My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, oh, super kill. friendly, that well, you well, helped him out, and that you're gonna be our flame bearers this turn fire night. Oh, so you're Toba's uncle. Great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. I could be an asshole too. Incredibly highly of them. Seriously. If you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it out in no time. Really? All I want is to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our history. On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings, including my entire manuscript. That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him. Lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student. If only for Toba and Tiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. Where were we ambushed? See what I mean, Ponche? Now you've run into these two, your luck's about to change, big time. I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you. Hmm, the nearby or the pretty far away? Huh? What do you mean? I would have turned that shit on because I don't care what the other says. So it's not that far away. We're back in a kind of tribe place. Watch your foot. Hey! You... You... Thieving rat! Give me my things back! <sighs> what do you want now, you old bum? God, you're a waste of space. Prepare to get shoved foot first into a tree hollow. I dare you to fucking try. Oh, what's this? Brought a little bodyguard with you, huh? All right, let's see what you've got. Watch this. Eat dirt, suckers. Dude, so you just touched his eyes, him. really? Wait, me too? Did I just stood there like an idiot? Hey, he's trying to get away. You good? I'm chasing down. Ooh, I'm an animal. Ah. What up, bitch? Hey, <laughs> I'll just drop kick him like ah! Stop, please! By all the warriors, heroes, gods, and kings, I can't run any longer. Please, I don't have your stuff anymore. Have mercy. Oh yeah? Well, where is it then? I, I threw it away. What? You threw it away? The old bum's bag didn't have a single mora in it. Just a tatty old book, worn out pens, and some old rags. All that time lying in wait was for nothing. I was so mad, I just threw all of it away. Hmm, is that really the truth? Okay then, where did you throw it away? The same place you found me. Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth. May all my worldly possessions be turned to ash by turn fire if I'm lying. Okay, that's a pretty strong oath. What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth. Let's go where we were and see if we can find it. Right. Let's hope nobody, nobody gets to the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. If you're lying... Hidden cave again, this is Kanich. Although the turn fire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzatlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. Is that the teacher Kanich hired? This holds true for all bearers. Oh god, it's ridiculous, it's so funny. History. I'll be your teacher since you're being a bitch. natural causes. As if the specter of the turn fire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. 
None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies Turnfire. What an incredible work on ancient name philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. Let me see, the author is... Ponche. Nice. A gentleman and a scholar. Ugh, silence, oh, book so muncher! Like the great Kahula Howe well, will what, suffer what? your droning voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical <laughs> records? <laughs> joy? What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price? What? Mm. You're saying Kanichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to take over his body? Oh shit, I do remember seeing him before you paid that. Once he dies, he takes the body. Kind of disturbing. When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great Gahula Howe demands to know! Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. You make us Abyss Order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Gahula Howe is sheer vanity! And if that day ever comes, Oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about doomsday. Here's what I know. Based on countless historical texts, all civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms, to heavenly thrones, to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle, thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization spirit. And you, great Kahula Howe, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now, let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of that age still remain inside you. Hmm. Is he stroking him? He's like, I'm being good, can you help me? No, you've been a rude bitch, dude. Alright, we're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all of my hard work was for nothing? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book. But the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points at least? The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the Turnfire Night is because I hoped that maybe it might help us find a way through these trying times. But now... You mean you saw the Meltzer's King okay, problem? Okay. Well, not exactly. But I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipo. Ponche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain remnants of Shibalonke's power. Yeah, I remember that story. My grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case. Most kids stop believing in that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions here. There is evidence. My well can just shut down because my life just crashed, so we're good. Like what? Like the fact that the Mountain King is still alive? Everyone attributes that to the power of the Abyss. But there's more to it than that. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the Abyss? Um, Traveler, different situation but similar idea. Doesn't this remind you of the hilly- Shh! Shut the fuck up! So, 
I came to the conclusion that Molly Poe must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tit for tat exchange. Don't say anything else. It began with the first Pyro Archon, fell with the Grand Alliance, then was buried in the Night Kingdom. And now it awaits the call of its new bearer. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Ponche, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry. I was originally planning on presenting my findings to Kanich. I'd hoped he would be attending the upcoming ceremony. Sounds to me like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another. Uh, Kanich, what are you doing here? I more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch-up. Now a good time? Kanich! I'm onto something! I haven't worked out all the details, but... but... you have to attend the Turnfire Night. Uh Ponche here has done a lot of research on the history of the Turnfire and thinks he might have found a way for you to solve the problem. I'll be there, Ponche. Let's go. Man, he doesn't know what's going really, so we have to play along and act like nothing's happening. Yo, Kunich, is Daniel okay with you? Well, let's have our plans. Here we'll do. Okay. Have you found a way to summon a beastly wilt? Yeah. I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have our plan come Turnfire Night. Sounds like you're not considering Ponche's idea. You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We need a more practical solution with concrete steps to follow. Yet? Are you saying you think he might actually be onto something? I think it's possible, based on something I know about the war 500 years ago. All right. Burkina didn't fall to the abyss. He was killed by the Mountain King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, Burkina made the fateful decision to not fight back, and instead pass his blood and power on to the Mountain King. What about the chokes of the Omni Undertaker about fat? Maybe he thought the Mountain King was stronger than him, and more valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was just out of loyalty to his friend. Either way, I can believe the Turnfire was involved. Whether you think his sacrifice triggered it, or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the Malipo name, it makes sense to me. How can you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the Mountain King. His mind is so disordered, it took some time to piece it all together. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. The God. Mountain King's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering, and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put out of his misery. What? Then... then what should we do? Should we grant him his wish? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. So your goal hasn't changed. It's the only practical solution. The Mountain King is a hero to my tribe. An object of worship, even. Ending his life would be like desecrating a statue. Still... He's been the cause of multiple disasters, and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh. Practical solutions hurt Paimon's brain. Can we follow our hearts next time? <laughs> then let's break for the day. I've already found a suitable venue for tomorrow. Oh, right, nice. I'm actually gonna stop with Dale, because why not? I'm gonna Dale. Like, subscribe, I'll see you the side, you know.